So we're here in Clovis, California, and this is the whole house filter. It's the sediment filter that we took out. Um, as you can see, it looks like it's been in there for a very long time. Anyway, so we took that one out, took the old O-ring out, and got, a, got you a new uh, cartridge in there. It's already been installed, already turned back on, and um, we'll mark it. We'll, we'll write on here somewhere the date today. Typically, these are going to be changed out every six months to a year. Um, so we'll mark the date on there and then you'll know when it needs to be changed again, but that one was pretty dirty So anyways, it's got a new o-ring. We, we greased it up that o-ring with this uh, plumber's grease that we've got got it uh, back in Pressure looks good to the home. No leaking there. Water's back on uh, outside of that uh, This part of the installation is done So we've just finished installing this cooler uh, canister here. This is a Cimarron toilet and um, the bottom gasket was worn out and this top gasket had floated down and it was it's, it was just old. You could replace the gasket but uh, it's like for 15 bucks you could replace the whole canister. So everything all the way down uh, has been replaced. This lever is, is a little sticky as far as I'm concerned. It should drop back down on its own but it is functioning correctly. Um, once you pick it up, it does allow the canister to, to dump back into place. So when you do flush it, that canister drops back down like it's supposed to. And then the little pink gasket down there does seal, uh, which prohibits the water from going down into the bowl. And, uh, and then the fill valve is shutting off correctly. So that was what we contracted to do. Um, everything else looks good. You can see it's filling up correctly. The labels over here it shows uh, 1.6, which is the top line, and then 1.28, there's a bottom line. So it's about right in between. Uh, 1.28 is code now in California because of the water conservation. So uh, water's a little murky. We just replaced the uh, whole house filter out front, and you'll see the beginning part of this video. Uh, that documents that outside of uh, that this part of the installation is done as well so we're still here in Clovis and we're getting ready to replace all of this corroded piping um, first of all copper and galvanized piping should never be used together uh, you can use galvanized piping in brass you can use brass and copper but these two you'll get corrosion so we pull this apart and these take little gaskets right up here. The first one we've got apart so that we can disassemble the iron pipe. You can see that the gasket when it was installed, uh, they didn't get, didn't, didn't get it installed correctly. So you can get you a good picture, it'll focus on that. You can see how it's crunched and bent over on the end. So they got it in there a little uh, off center. You can see that maybe you can, maybe you can't, but there's a ridge on top. So they got it caught on something when they installed it. We'll try reusing this. Uh, worst case, it'll go back together and, and it will leak. Uh, best case, we can get it back on there and it'll tighten back down and maybe flatten back out. But we'll get some new lube on this, new grease on this, get it back together, get this repiped. Also, probably take another video of the cold once we get that popped apart. And then we'll take a video when we're done. So, still here in Clovis, and uh, I don't know what part video we're in, maybe third part. I uh, did a couple other projects, recorded those. We'll combine all these when we get done. Right now, we're flushing the unit out. We went ahead and we took a, a video here of what was in place. You can see all of this uh, piping that whoever installed this, Renai, uh, put in some copper and some galvanized piping. And uh, even without the two together, uh, galvanized pipe breaks down you can see pretty substantially it's pretty scaled over that's what happens inside the pipe and uh, and then it begins to rust on the outside where it makes a connection you can see here it's electrolysis so uh, you can use brass with the brass or just tie straight in copper which is what we've done we've got it tied in we haven't actually tested our joints yet because we haven't turned the water back onto the home right now we're simply flushing the unit which isolates uh, the the water the cold water in it shuts down here so it doesn't allow cold water into the unit and then this valve does not allow any water out of the unit back into the house right now obviously it's or at least obvious to me distilled white vinegar and so these two valves are open top that's your flushing procedure. 
uh, cold and hot off and then cold and hot on. So these are the main valves on the side. These are the flush valves on the top. So cold goes down to the pump. And I just like to use blue and red just so it doesn't get confusing for people or for me. And then red just pumps back into the bucket. You can see that's a pretty good flow. Flowing real good. So that heat exchanger does look like it's in pretty good shape. It's about three years old, I believe the homeowner said it was. It's the RL94. Um, so you let this run for about an hour, an hour and a half depending on how you know often you flush this typically an hour is good enough uh, once we get this flushed out uh, we'll go ahead and uh, flush it up flush all the vinegar out by running some water through it and then we'll turn the water back on to um, the unit itself which means these two lines here uh, the hot and the cold will be pressurized right now they're not because water's off to the home just to test our joints it's hard to solder when you've got a got water in the line so these two fittings, not sure how well they take with the solder because uh, this is the lowest point of the building. Cold water is constantly filling up, I'm trying to solder right here. There's other fittings you could use. I don't have them with me. Compression fittings, uh, shark bite fittings, but I just like to do solid uh, soldering all the way through. Uh, so we'll get this tied back in while we're watching this uh, vinegar uh, circulate. And then when we're done, we'll um, flush out the, the tank with the water and I think that is all we have to do out here today. Okay, last video promise, actually not last video, last part of the video, we are complete here. We have done the canister replacement, the Kohler uh, flush valve, the canister and the downstairs bath, that's good. We've replaced the whole house sediment filter out front, sorry a lot of noise right now. Um, and then we've come down here and repiped this. Uh, we took previous videos, so you'll see that all the iron pipe is gone. We did change this to brass. It was just corroded. It was iron pipe. It doesn't need to be um, brass because there's typically no water in this line, but it is a dielectric union. It is uh, brass nipple and then solid copper all the way down. This is solid copper. We just put a couple uh, couplings in here, went straight into the valves, tied it in. Um, this has a little weep right there, so let's get a wrench and get that tightened up. Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. Uh, when we took the screen out, which is right there, we got a bunch of junk out of there, and I think water just rolled down there. I don't think there's leaking there. So let's just take a quick peek at it, and you can see no, no weeping. So I think we're good there. Um, as with everything, you know, once this all dries up right here, this is distilled vinegar and then some water and whatnot. Once this dries up, you shouldn't have any water in here, any water at, at all whatsoever, even a drop. Give us a holler, we'll come back out, take care of it right away. Uh, so these are not our valves. We didn't, didn't install these, so if, and these should last forever. But, um, you know, the working parts, like the nuts here and here, whatnot, if things begin to leak, that's not us. We did tie in here. And here, there's a couple couplings that are behind these. You can see right there, coupling. And there's a couple right there, one, two. So that's our work. Just soldering some fittings here, screwing some fitting in there, installing a brass nipple, a dielectric union, a coupling here, everything tied back together. Uh, so as far as we can see, everything looks correct. Nothing is leaking. Outside of that, this installation is done.